Do you remember the day the DEA made MDMA illegal? Yeah, it was a tremendous sadness because it was clear to us that there was an enormous potential that was being squandered and that we had no idea how long it would take for us to bring it back. Right. I did it out of necessity. Right. So I, I became an entrepreneur more out of necessity than out of intention. We've got another drug. It is synthetic and it makes you love everybody. MDMA. It was extraordinarily psychedelic. The potential for abuse is enormous. Possession of ecstasy now carries the same penalties as heroin. You can dance all night. Under emergency controls in Schedule 1. And at the very least, deserves further research. MDMA is best known as ecstasy or molly, an illegal club drug that produces waves of pleasure and empathy. But for the past several decades, one brazen entrepreneur has been fighting to legalize the drug for therapeutic use. So Rick, how long have you actually been looking to legalize MDMA? Um, uh, 36 years. You know, the big question that I have is why? Did this feel like a calling, like a purpose, like to go that it, it, long? It was definitely a calling. Um, and I, I didn't know how long it would take. I, 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 but I knew that it didn't matter that this was the most important idea I had, the most important contribution I could make to the world was to bring back psychedelics. At the time, Rick was learning to be a psychedelic therapist and experimenting with the healing power of MDMA. That, that's my PhD. <laughs> but when the drug was criminalized, he founded the nonprofit pharmaceutical company MAPS and began raising money to fund clinical trials. This is how the FDA is structured at the time. He's been trying to prove that MDMA is an effective treatment for PTSD. He believes in his cause so deeply that he staked his whole life on it. For the first uh, seven years of MAPS, um, I was the only employee, and for almost all of that, I never earned any money. And then near the seventh year, I started getting $10,000 a year. What are some of the other sacrifices you've had to make along the journey? Reputationally, I mean, people think if you're working on psychedelics, somehow uh, you're a bit off balance. You know, there, there's that prejudice against it. Um, they compared me to Pablo Escobar. <laughs> it was pretty hilarious. Oh yeah, yeah, we've been uh, vilified, demonized, um, yeah, by all sorts of people. In order to get a sense of just how effective Rick's MDMA treatment was, I met with one of the patients from his phase two clinical trials. I actually bought that rifle within the past year. Prior to that, I didn't own weapons for eight years because I kept trying to put them in my mouth. I got rid of them all. John Lebecki was stationed in Iraq as an army sergeant for 12 months. He returned home in 2006 with severe PTSD. When I realized I absolutely needed help was on Christmas Eve of 2006. My wife had left while I was gone, didn't want to sit in an empty house on Christmas. So I went and I sat at the War Memorial in Raleigh, North Carolina on the Capitol grounds for about an hour trying to come up with a really fun and inventive way to kill myself. And I realized I'd been through briefings and they said, if you start feeling this way, go to a hospital. So I drove to Womack Army Medical Center at Fort Bragg. And I said I was gonna kill myself. They gave me six Xanax, told me not to take them all at the same time because it might kill me. They asked if I had guns at home and I said, yes, a lot. And they said, if I asked if I had ammo. I said, yeah, uh, plenty. And they said, okay, when you get home, give all your guns to a neighbor. This is like four o'clock in the morning. And they said, come back after the holidays. So I went home and I, I drank a, a fifth of vodka, loaded a Beretta 9 millimeter, put it to my temple and I pulled the trigger. And the most peace I had felt was that microsecond as the hammer fell. But it didn't go off. It went bang, it just, the bullet got stuck in the barrel, squib load. John lived with PTSD for eight years. Finally, in 2013, he got wind of Rick's phase two MDMA trials. He applied and was accepted. You know, they put me through it, the treatment, and you know, I still have some issues with fireworks, explosions, loud noises, things like that. Mm -hmm. But it reduced my, my, uh, my PTSD by 50%, depression by 60%, suicidal wow. ideation completely vanished. Wow. And I know you met Medhoffers yesterday. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, they're the ones that did the treatment with me. Right. And, you know, I owe them and Rick Doblin my life. Though Rick Doblin is the entrepreneur, psychiatrist Michael Mithoffer and his wife Anne, a nurse, have run all of Doblin's clinical trials. So this is where we store the MDMA. Some of our pills are red, so we get a lot of jokes about 
the red pill or the oh, blue pill. Right. <laughs> Together, they've administered the drug to hundreds of patients and measured the results. While I was down in Charleston, I got to meet with them as they were gearing up for the third and final phase of clinical trials. Can you explain to me how MDMA actually works in the brain? MDMA causes a lot of different effects in the brain. It's a good analogy would be as if you've been tobogganing down a hill, and after a few runs, you have a rut and you can't turn, and that's kind of the state people with PTSD are in. And this MDMA effect on the neural networks is like new fallen snow. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> that moment that I got blown up. This is footage from the phase two trials of a Marine undergoing the MDMA treatment. And everything was moving so slow. And I can really go back and visualize it. I've never been able to visualize it so hard before. So, you know, you can see the MDMA is helping him face it with, without so much anxiety, but he's very clear. In fact, he can remember it. He, he says he's remembering it even more clearly. Right. Mm. And then I tried thinking about that aspect of me that's just really rageful. And I had this image of it like in a jail cell. I felt like I put that person there and I went to it and just opened the door and like hugged that person and then the eyes just faded away and it no longer had kind of an evil look to itself and like we like I visualized both of us just taking apart the jail cell. I really feel like so much more at peace with like everything. Great. <laughs> what a breakthrough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All within a couple hours of taking one dose of MDMA. <laughs> I mean, he told us and his wife told us in person too, the rage attacks stopped the day after that and they haven't come back mm -hmm. years later. If MDMA is legalized, it would not be a take-home medication. It would be administered under the supervision of professionals like Michael and Annie. So when do you expect to get that FDA approval? Rick says 2021, I say 2021 or 2022. <laughs> That's constantly changing. Right. How will it feel when that day comes for you? That'll, that'll be an amazing feeling. Did you ever, did you ever think of quitting? Or did any um, moment did you just feel like giving up? Because you know, as entrepreneurs, there's, there's always yeah. those moments. Well, I, I never had a moment of quitting because I felt like this was about survival, my survival, humanity's survival. The way that I kept going is I had to change my satisfaction from outcome to struggle. So that as long as I was trying hard and doing my best, I could be happy at the end of the day, whether it worked or not. And if I was focused on the outcome, like I had to succeed at this or that, against all this massive opposition, I would have been discouraged, burned out, and would have given it up, you know, decades ago. If Doblin and his team went out, his 33-year-old company will finally be able to generate revenue. And thanks to an FDA incentive called data exclusivity, the earning potential is quite high. We're basically going to have six years of being the monopoly seller of MDMA. Um, there's 10 million people in the U.S. that have PTSD. We're, we're talking about an incredible need for the product. There's many, many other uses of MDMA other than PTSD. So, um, you know, we could be worth a billion dollars or, or who knows what, but we're not going to... Uh, we don't value it in that way. Rick told me that all the profits his company makes will go back into further research. And surprisingly, he himself plans on stepping down. My reward will not be in money. I'll become a psychedelic therapist. And so I'll probably leave for the next generation of leadership to maps to others. And I'll be, my reward will be able to be a legal psychedelic therapist, which is what I've wanted to do since I was 18 with a little tiny clinic on the beach somewhere and work with people who want to grow, but I will have made this whole, help make this whole thing legal. So I don't, there's no big payoff for me at the end um, in that way. Um, the payoff is the satisfaction of uh, dying peacefully and thinking, wow, you know, I helped make the world a better place.